Hi everybody, I'm here to show you today how to set up a file in Adobe Illustrator to be able to cut on the Roland GX24 vinyl cutter. And uh, I have a graphic in here that I dragged in. It's uh, just a little uh, flame that you can see with some text on it. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my, my artboard size, which is 24 inches by 27 inches. Uh, and then, um, what you want to do is you want to have um, two layers. One layer is set up where I have all my uh, outlines of the graphic here. Uh, the one layer has the graphic, the other is your cut line. So you're going to want to have that on a separate layer so you can hide that when you go to print. And then also you can just select that, which is what you want to cut. Um, so I'm going to duplicate these by holding the shift key and the alt key and then releasing my mouse button. And I'm going to fill up the page with these graphics and cut marks. Okay, so now that I got these set up, um, I'm going to add my crop marks. And to do that, I go over here. Uh, well, first of all, let me show you how to open up this Cut Studio. You should have a plugin that you've downloaded and installed called Cut Studio Plugin. You go to Extensions, Cut Studio Plugin, open that up, and then you will see this little crop mark icon. You click on that, and that places your crop marks. It puts three crop marks in there. Um, so what you want to do now is you, um, if you want to, I have these crop marks in there already set up the way I want them. But if you want to adjust them, you go to the crop marks here, and it opens up this little dialog box. That's your width, your length, and this is your, uh, your X position and your Y position. And what I like to do is take a little screenshot of this. Oops. I'm going to just take a little screenshot by hitting Command Shift 4. And that's going to put it on my desktop here. And I'm going to drag that into, onto the file. Seems like a lot of little steps here, but the reason I do this is because when you close this file, you are not going to have those crop marks. It's going to go back to the default, and you won't have those crop marks anymore. So um, I just embed them in the file so I have them in there and then I know where everything is supposed to line up. So that way when I open the file again and I have to adjust my crop marks, I know exactly where they need to be. Okay, so now that I got that set up and I got my crop marks in the position I want, uh, I'm pretty much ready to print. I, I generally like to set these crop marks up uh, about an inch inside the artboard. That way I'll have a little margin here for the rollers to clear that area. So, and then you also want to leave room on the top from the, uh, from the top of this graphic to the top of your, uh, your document here. You want to have a, about four inches or more that way the rollers, when they move up and down to cut these lines, they, there will be play there. Otherwise, it'll just stop. It'll stop cutting because you won't have any media to feed in and out. So once you have that all set up, you're pretty much ready to cut. So then I go back here. I hide this layer. And um, now I'm ready to, um, not ready to cut, but actually ready to print the graphic. So I go Control P and uh, page setup here, uh, manage custom sizes, and I already have that set up in there, 24 by 27, click OK, and now you're ready to print. So I'm going to go ahead and print this, and once I do, I will come back and show you how to do the rest. Just printed out our piece and we're getting ready to stick it in the cutting machine. You can see the crop marks are all on there and the graphics are printed out. 
And I also laminated this. Um, you don't necessarily, you can get away with not laminating it if it's not in a you know, cold place or a wet place. Um, but then you have to change the settings when you, uh, on the force, the way this thing cuts. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I'm going to load this piece in, going in this direction. And I usually line this up right along this edge here. And one thing you want to do is make sure that these roller marks are not too far out, but maybe about half an inch in and, and away from your crop mark. And then this one over here, um, you also want to make sure it's a little bit away from the crop mark. And they also have to be lined up with these little tabs that you see here on the top. If they're not, your machine's going to give you an error message. So then I lock down the lever. Um, now I'm going to get set the head in place. I have it set to roll. I usually use the roll setting. There's three different settings. There's edge, which will just detect the edge of your piece. Then there's piece, and then you got roll. Roll seems to kind of uh, be universal. It seems to work for everything, even if you just have a piece in there. So I go with that. Click enter. The head will set over in motion. And once the head is in place, you're pretty much ready to cut. The only other thing you want to check is your force. Click on the force setting, and because this is a laminated piece of media I got in there, I want it at the highest setting. So if you select this right arrow here, you can go toggle up and down to change the force. I have it at 250. If I'm just cutting straight vinyl, I usually keep it around 130, 140, depending on how I have the depth gauge set on my blade. And there's also a little setting here that kind of fine tunes it. I usually don't mess with that. Um, one thing you might want to do before you actually cut a piece is hit this little test button and it'll cut a little snippet on the end that you can check to see if it's cutting deep enough. If it's cutting too deep, that's not good. If it's not cutting deep enough, that's also a problem. So once you have everything set up in place, you're pretty much ready to cut. Go back to menu here and then you just go back to your machine and hit cut and it should cut the piece the way you want it to. Okay, so now I'm going back to my illustrator file and I am going to show that layer with the, the cut marks on it and I'm going to select over here the, the marks and I like to have uh, I like to have output selected lines so um, it's only going to cut what is selected it's not going to cut any of this stuff in there um, so then click update. Um, I've already done this, so it's not going to make any changes here, but you can see a little preview of where your document is going to cut. And then, uh, then you, you click on this icon here, this little printer icon. It'll start processing the information. You see the little wheel here? Grab a coffee now, and uh, then you hit cut, and your machine will start to cut your piece. Okay, now after I hit cut, you'll see the you'll see the Roland searching for the crop marks, uh, and then it's going to bounce over here, and it's going to look for that one. I try to hold this media down because I laminated it and it buckles up on the ends. So it kind of creates a little problem there. And then it's going to find the last crop mark there. And then it's going to start cutting. The strange thing about this machine is it doesn't cut from the end on either end. It starts somewhere like a lot of times in the middle. Well, actually this one is cutting on the, on the top right, but a lot of times it starts cutting in the middle section or in different places. Um, and you, I don't know if you could see that, but it's actually cutting. It's leaving a little white space around the edge. What you don't, uh, what you want to do a lot of times when you set up your, um, your graphic is you want to leave room for margin uh, so say you have this red right here you want to blow that out a little bit maybe create a background that has red so that when it cuts it you don't have to worry about where the line's going to cut 
Um, I just have white here, so it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, it's going to leave a little excess white. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's uh, going to cut all these out, and uh, the only other thing I run into sometimes is um, when this thing is searching for the crop marks, it has a hard time finding them sometimes, and, and you'll get a little error message saying cannot find crop mark. So um, usually when that happens, it's a uh, it could be for several different reasons, but I find that sometimes um, this mark is not in the right position to where the head can find it, and um, that's why it's very important when you set this up to make sure that um, these roller marks are fairly close to the crop mark, because when it goes to search, it's going to, uh, if it's far away from that crop mark, it's not going to find it. Another thing is sometimes if you're using like a glossy laminate, you'll find that it won't uh, find the mark uh, because it's it's too shiny, the, the laser can't see it. And sometimes, you also want to make sure this background is is uh, a lighter color. Uh, so if you have a, pro a crop mark part printed on a darker color, you're not going to be able to see that as well. Um, so those are some snags that I've run into because um, sometimes those crop marks can get kind of frustrating. But hopefully this is uh, helpful and you've learned something today that you haven't learned before. All right, have a good one.